Hey, how's it going? So you might have seen recently that I've made a few videos, things like this. And things like this. And it's me using uh, Ableton Live and using virtual reality, using an app called Move Music to uh, control it, basically. Basically using VR as a MIDI controller. Um, I've had a few people, not thousands, but you know, we're getting there, uh, asking me like how it works and what you need and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just gonna do like a little quick run through video. Um, I'll probably do a proper tutorial at some point, but this is just gonna be like a whistle stop tour as it will be. Um, so basically all you need is a VR headset um, and I'm using the Quest 2. I think you can use the Quest, the Quest 2 or, or like a, any Oculus headset. You might actually barely use a non-Oculus headset, but the only thing is the app either runs on like the native Quest standalone, so through the App Lab, or it runs um, through the Oculus like PC VR app. So I think you might need an Oculus headset, or at least you need a headset that can run through the Oculus stuff. So you might be able to do that with the Vive. I'm not quite sure, because I've never had a headset that wasn't Oculus, uh, other than the G2, which turned out to be rubbish. So I sent it back and got the Quest 2. It's, it's just way better. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not a Facebook like fanboy or anything, but bang for buck, the Quest 2 is still the best headset out there for sure. If you just want to do stuff like this anyway, maybe not the best visually, but it's the best. Anyway, so if you've got something that isn't, um, Oculus, maybe just get in touch with Tim in the Discord because he might be able to sort you out a different version that works. Um, I think he said in the past that the Steam version won't be that difficult to get going. So, so yeah, just um, come and do that sort of thing. So if you want to take a look at the website, it's up here, movemusic.com. Um, there is a Discord as well, which is where I think the best place to come is. Just come to that. I'll put the link in the uh, description again. Um, but just come here and speak to Tim. He's the developer, not me. Uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions. So. Basically, all I've done is I set up like my own um, script and I did that through an app called Control Surface Studio, which is a paid app, but it is really good. Uh, I picked it up in the sale last time and it's been well useful. So basically, I've got a custom script running in Ableton. And if you come into here and actually if I make a few more tracks, if I just do that, you'll see I've got this yellow box. The, uh, the blue one is actually Cliff X. Whoops, keeps going, uh, which I need to do something with that for sure. I, I keep meaning to do more, but I keep getting carried away doing this VR stuff, but I'd like to combine the two at some point. But yeah, basically you can see that I've got this yellow box and that's because I defined this yellow box um, and I can move this around if I like. I can do it, you know, and as you kind of a push or anything like that. Um, so if you go into control surface, you see this session box here. This, this is essentially, uh, this is just the way I've laid it out and it is a little bit of a mess, but I've got so many buttons, so many things, you know, so many things going on in here. Uh, and I can't actually remember how I did it, half of it, because it was a while ago I actually set the script up. But basically, this is how I set the script up, and I did it in Control Surface Studio, uh, which is well worth a look, unless you know how to write Python code, which which I don't, which is why I got the app. So, yeah, so I'm running a custom script, which I will share with you. You can download it. You can do whatever you want with it. You can edit it. I don't care. Uh, but just know that it's not necessarily like the cleanest or the best way to do everything, but everything seems to work. Um, I have actually made a, um, a thing here, a little handy spreadsheet to cross-reference all the control uh, numbers that you've got in here. So you can do things like set the tempo with, uh, as long as you're running on channel 16 and you've got the script running in Ableton, which is here. So you see here, I've got this uh, CSS Ableton template one input and I'm running it through Loop MIDI, which is a virtual driver on PC. You could probably use this script on Mac as well. Uh, I should probably try that at some point, but yeah, I've just got these virtual ports running. I don't really need an out, but I've got an in and that's happening. So yeah, so we'll go back to this. These are the things you can do. So like the reason I spread some onto CCs and some onto notes was mainly because I was running out of space because you only get so many controllers on one channel. Uh, but also because initially on the Move Music app, you couldn't have certain, so there's these things called hit zones, which are like these spheres. And originally you could only have those as notes, you couldn't have them as CCs, but that's now been updated. So I might come back and change the way this has been set up, but at the moment I can't really be bothered and it works. So yeah, you can do all sorts with this. You can do like, there you go. If you, if you did note number zero, that would play globally. Uh, that would stop, which is one. There's an undo and redo, which is two and three. Um, highlight navigation will, will, will kind of highlight between uh, different devices, I think. So if you if you were to, uh, oops, I'm gonna do that. If you were to like go between devices like that, you know, when you go left to right, you can do that sort of stuff. You can, I've, I've kind of like tried to add every function that I thought would be useful, like metronome on and off, super useful, tap tempo, super useful. 
Um, yeah, you can go up and down a scene, you can move the session box around, you can do lots of stuff, you can actually mute tracks one to eight, and that's the yellow box, I mean. So wherever your yellow box is focused from one to eight, and you can make that as big as you want if you come in and edit the script. Uh, but I thought one to eight was fine. Uh, to be honest, in the VR stuff, I'm often not using more than like four tracks because it, it's a bit of a, there's quite a lot going on anyway if you're in VR, like it's, it's quite hard to focus on more. So I think less is more, but I don't know, I'm going to keep changing how I do this. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how it all works. You know, I've added in volume for the activate tracks, I've added in pan, the sends. And again, I'm not using half of this, but it's there if you need it. Session records useful um, because then you can do like overdubbing and things like that. Uh, and then these are all your session box launch um, buttons. So you can see there's one for, oh no, there's one for every single section on that yellow box essentially. And then you've got all the stops at the bottom. So yeah, if you wanna download this, I'm, I've got the link to this spreadsheet and I've got a link to the script. And then all you need to do is chuck it into your um, MIDI remote scripts, which is in here. It might be in a slightly different place on your computer, but on Windows, it tends to be in your program data, Ableton, whatever version you're using, and it's somewhere in there, MIDI remote script. Did I just move it? Oh shit, probably. Um, I'll come back to that. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll just jump into the headset now and just show you a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's all you need, I think. So yeah, good luck. And if you have any um, trouble with it, just come and ask me about it because I'm happy to share. Come with us now on a journey through time. All right, cool. So we're inside the app, yeah? So when you open it up, you'll just probably get a blank kind of space because this is something that I've made. But if you just bring up your, um, with your menu button, you can bring up like your your thing here and you can make a new project and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you're using it wirelessly, you can connect wirelessly. So you can do this wirelessly straight from the headset to, um, to your computer or whatever. You could even do this on a different computer if you just set up your wireless connection correctly but i'm i'm doing it wired just because i you know I, I like the cable me it just makes life easier so there's one other option that i want to show you on here and i can't actually show you how it works on the pc version but on the quest version when you turn this mr pass through on it will actually use your quest's camera and show you the camera with this stuff overlaid over the top of it which obviously means that wherever you look you can actually see your room uh, you know albi it's not like in the most high definition but it's pretty cool and it does work pretty well um tim the developer has said that he should on the next version be able to put this on the pc one so i'm going to hold him to that and i'm really looking forward to being able to do that because it's going to be really cool to like have you know like a, you could have a keyboard in front of you and you could be messing around with this and then you could play a few keys and then you could jump on your controllers and you could do all sorts of mad kind of mixed reality stuff and i, I think that's where the power of this stuff it really is you know the, it's the mixed reality because virtual reality is very like closed off you know you got it on your face and you can't see anybody but if you could mix you could overlay stuff like this on top of your instruments i think that's where the um, real power lies but yeah that's maybe another discussion for another time so what i'll show you now uh is if you so if you're in the oculus app you probably already know if you've got an oculus headset you just bring up your oculus menu like this and what you can do is you can bring up your desktop uh i've got two monitors so i get two choices there but that's monitor one and on monitor one at the moment i've got my ableton window the reason that didn't stay up is because i didn't pin it so you want to make sure you pin it like that then you can move it or kind of wherever you want you can sort of do all this sort of stuff with it uh it works pretty well um i just wish that and this is again an oculus thing as you can see what happens there, like basically it overlays this window over whatever you're doing in VR. So it kind of gets in the way, but I don't know if there's a way that they could sort that out because I guess this stuff here, I want in the foreground, actually the background stuff, I do want it to block. So I guess it almost needs like an element in the app, like to be like a window pass through or whatever. And I think some apps have done that. So maybe that's something that could be added in, in the future, but at the moment, this does work quite well. And I'm actually just going to make this a little bit smaller because it's, it's a bit too big in my face. Um, it's just as easy as that, isn't it? Takes you a little while, right? Yeah. So what I've done here is I've already set up. So, you know, when I showed you before in the uh, spreadsheet, which hopefully alt tab works yet. Yeah. So um, in here, I've got my session box clip, which is 1640 there. Um, I can't really point to it because, I'm, yeah, it's confusing. But this one, basically, if I grab that, you'll see that it's on channel 16 and it's 40. So my script, if you've got my script running and you've got a MIDI device that has these numbers, they will work in exactly the same way. It's not like Move Music is doing anything clever. But, um, well, it is doing something clever, but in this case, you could use any MIDI controller that's using these control numbers. So as you can see, I've done 41, 42, 43, 44 going along, and it goes all the way along. If you see there, if I move my hand through, 
it's it's launching clips uh, obviously there's nothing to launch yet but it does it does work yeah and if i was to add for example a different control number so let's just just to show you the tempo set so if i make a um one of these boxes so the, these you can have like the 3d box is the standard one and that has three controller numbers on it but if i make this a 1d controller it's essentially like a fader really um we'd, we'd like to see some faders in here i think some proper faders but if i change this up to channel 16 the reason i did channel 16 is because i thought let's just put it all on there and i don't have to worry about triggering anything else because it just in my head the last one is always going to be set as some kind of control channel as opposed to a instrument or something so tempo set now this should work i hope let's hope so if i just tab back to my ableton live window and now i do this yeah that's working nice so that's good um you can't set the range in here no you can't set the range in here but you can set the range obviously in ableton live and actually interestingly enough that's already set to a lower range maybe i already did that i can't remember um not sure actually but yeah that, that's that's quite a good range i think i might have already set this in this file although it's an untitled file so hmm, interesting maybe i did the range i don't know i'm, I'm just i don't know <laughs> i'm just gonna leave that so anyway the um the other things that i was saying would be quite useful i guess would be like uh having a metronome on off button so again you would just go to this spreadsheet here you'd say channel 16 and you'd find that one which is 1607 so if i just find that just to show you that it works um and i tab back to my window then you'll see that that now turns the metronome on and off um what i might do in the future is there are a, this wasn't in when i did my script but you can actually do like a toggle now and i don't know how that would work with a midi message but i i was just thinking it might be quite nice to have kind of the visual representation of having that toggle on and off for certain controls um does it yes it's not really working properly because it's only sending the on message when you yeah when you first turn it on when you turn it off obviously it's not doing anything so in this case you'd want to use a hold um there is also a timed which is really useful for, for like played notes um like so you want to have a bit of a release on it and you can set that to be as long as you want but yeah so that, i mean that's it really i'm not going to show you i'm not going to do a big performance or anything this time i just wanted to show you kind of how it works um and then everything else the way i do um in here so i told you i've set channel 16 to be like my control channel well anything else if i was to just make like a baseline or something i would just come in here and make sure that i didn't use channel 16 um, and I would use like channel one, for instance, and maybe I'd say, all right, I want this song to be in C so that maybe I'd start on that C like that. And then maybe I'd say, well, maybe I want to have, you know, a note like that. And I just, I would just build up my notes like this manually. Obviously I'm sure there's a way if you get clever with the script that you could maybe turn this control like you do on a push, you could have it so that these are launch controls, but they're also, um, you know for playing notes or playing drum pads and you can have it all on one controller and that's something that i do want to get set up at some point soon but um i need to play with it a little bit more and actually part of the fun bit of vr is is because you're not limited to like a pad controller you, you're limited to 64 pads that's what you've got well whatever your controller's got you're limited to whereas in here i can just keep making new ones like i can make as many as i want and granted it's a little bit finicky but it's very open-ended and as i talked about in my previous video you can also um, have different workspaces within here. And at the moment, there's only four per session. So as you can see, I've got this one here, but maybe then I would want to make workspace two would be my drum beat or something. And I could have like, there we go. There's my kick drum snare and my hi-hat. And then now I can just be like, jump back to my session control and then jump back to my instrument. And then maybe I have my keyboard over here. And yeah, you can change the color of these and all sorts. And yeah, it's cool. But the one thing that we are missing, and again, it's something that Tim is, definitely aware of it's just a way to um you see how i can move this really easily well basically at the moment that's like a global move so whatever's in this workspace will move by holding grip so it's quite nice but in the future it'd be really nice and again you know time time will bring these things um if i could just group that and say right that's one element and then i can save that and you know do you know what i mean like it would be you could save this as a user patch and then you could share it with other people even maybe you don't even need the script in the future because it's built into the app, which again is something that I know Tim is working on. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you kind of where we're at with it, with it really. Like, um, I'm just, I just use this because I, I enjoy it and I, I feel like the more people that know about it and the more people that get involved with it, um, 
just the kind of more people start developing stuff like this and working on stuff like this. And it's just going to empower everybody, isn't it really? And then we're going to end up in this mad place where we're just all playing in this sort of virtual, non-virtual world or whatever it is. Who knows? Yeah. So maybe I'll see you in there and then we'll see what happens. Bye.